motivation limitless. So first and foremost, I want to say thank you. It's a pleasure for having you on this show. Uh, can you just do me a favor, introduce yourself, let them, let them know what sports you compete in or maybe have competed in, a little bit where you're from? Okay, uh, um, I'm Joe Shelton. Uh, I'm from Camden, New Jersey. I uh, competed in track and field for six to seven years. Uh, trained based out of Baylor University in Texas. Um, so I still compete, um, not competitively, but I compete just to keep myself in shape uh, to be a motivation to the younger generation. Okay. And you said about six or seven years, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And how were you introduced to track and field? Um, I was introduced to track and field uh, at a younger age. Uh, I played I played sports um, in Camden, New Jersey, and I was younger. Uh, I was involved in boxing, but uh, I believe an older mentor of mine wanted me to do some running for him, and uh, put me in a track club. Um, it was called Camden Pal. So uh, that's what I wind up doing track and field, and I wind up sticking with it from, I, I believe, the age of eight to currently now. Did you always start out with the same event? Because I know um, you said you started off, like, running. Yeah, no, nah, I, did, <laughs> I didn't know. The coach actually put me in the 800, and I didn't, actually, I didn't like it because it was two laps at, like, 10 years old, running two laps. And that, that hot weather, it was kind of difficult at times. So, again, I was kind of discouraged. Um, it was kind of, you know, painful at times. But as I got older, uh, my high school coach put me in the 800. He told me he was going to help me run faster for the 400. So I wound up believing him and trusting him, and I just stuck with it. So, How long did you run the 400? Um, I ran 400 since uh, it was my main event since I was about ninth grade all the way until – you know, college and professionally when I trained at Baylor University, so. Hmm. What would you say is the greatest workout to help you for that 400? Uh, the greatest workout? Uh, well, the, uh, till this day, I still have the greatest coach. It's Michael Johnson. He's a mentor of mine still. Um, he had the Olympic record in 43.18 in the 400, and he, he was a graduate of Baylor University. Um, so uh, that workout that we had at college was 12 200s, 30 seconds with a two-minute break in between. So each rep, you had to hit the buzzer. If you didn't hit the buzzer, that means you wasn't be you was behind on the workout. So um, the coach would tell us like, "Hey, you got to work faster. You got to work better because if you wasn't hitting the buzzer, that means you was behind." So at every fifty meters, a buzzer would beep at whatever the, the differentiation was between the seconds of, of the thirty seconds between five buzzers. So mm -hmm. how many times a week did you do that workout? Um, it week? was it was every it was it was every Monday. We knew our workout. We knew our workout actually when we got to practice prior because he would write it out and let us know. So we would do 200s on Mondays. Um, we would do like 600s on Tuesdays, 350s on Wednesdays. Yeah, um, yeah so it was kind of, it was, it was very difficult at times, but, you know, sometimes where we had to run fast and then if it was a meet week, we just did less reps just to prep us for the meet because we was either driving or flying to our destination just to do a, you know, shake out the next day, so. Would you say you traveled a lot when competing uh, there? Yes, I did. I did. I had the opportunity, to be honest with you. Um, to this day, I still, I'm still grateful for the individuals that, um, you know, paved the way for me. Uh, Sign Richards Ross is a great friend of mine. She's like a little sister. Uh, Jeremy Warner, who won an Olympic gold medal in 2004, he was a training partner. Uh, Darrell Williamson, um, they all attended Baylor. Reggie Witherspoon, um, we were all close knit, and I had the opportunity to train. I wasn't the fastest guy in the group at all, and I'm not afraid to tell people that. Uh, but just to, to go out there and work with those individuals, the work ethic that I had, I was more of a individual that practiced really, really hard. But then when I go to meets, I wouldn't, I wouldn't perform. And the coach would pull me to the side and would tell me um, certain things like, "Hey, the same effort that you put at practice, you would have to put into the meets." But you know, the crowd would get to me sometimes, and you know, I wouldn't execute the things that we worked on at practice. And we would just sit down and talk about it, um, and you know. It, it was a little discouraging at times, uh, but I just had to just continue to push through, and, and they seen the ability in me. Um, so I was just able to just, just just continue to just drive and just continue to just work hard and, you know, have the opportunity to just run. But like I said, I never made the Olympic team, never never made any big meets, Like, but I had the opportunity to just travel and be able to see certain things that I wouldn't be able to see coming from Camden, New Jersey. So. Okay. So... Let me ask you this. What would you say your greatest accomplishments have been thus far? To this day, to be honest to with you, um, it has it has nothing to do with track and field, to be honest with you. It has to do with education. Okay. Um, because the generation now that, 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 that we have grown to see, um, some of them don't value education. 
um, graduate from, you know, Southern University where I graduated with a double major with communications and a minor in public relations. Um, and then get my master's in December of 2023 from LSU Online. Um, they were my two greatest accomplishments outside of track and field. Uh, because without those things, I don't know where I'd be at right now. That that was the added and driving force for me to stay with track and field and stay in sports because if I didn't do well, I was going back to Camden, New Jersey. Um, and growing up when I was younger, Camden, New Jersey wasn't one of the greatest cities to, you know, grow up in and live in. So, you know, that was my motivation. Um, and I constantly, you know, you know, come in contact with the youth today and I talk to them about that uh, because some of them may have my story but are afraid to talk about it. But, you know, I let them know I'm not afraid to talk about my story. Um, and they always look at me like, Coach Joe, you have this, you have that. And I'm like, I really don't have that. I have, that I have where I worked hard for. Um, and that's what I try to instill in them right now. So. Okay. So currently you, you coach? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, I coach at uh, Timber Creek High School in New Jersey. Um, the young lady just won the state championship three years in a row yesterday. Um, I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, I'm just doing what I can to try to, you know, just just plant that seed in their lives and whatnot. So, those accomplishments that you have, are there any sacrifices that you had to make in order to get to those accomplishments or even complete them? Oh yes, yes, yes. What many, would you say they are? Many, many sacrifices that I had. Um, one, I had to take accountability of the things that I wanted to do um, when I was in college. No partying. I wasn't a partier. Still not a partier. Um, I didn't go out um, when people wanted to hang out or. Um, do certain things. I just had to tell them. I, was, I, I just had to just cut it off and just let them know. Obviously, they're gonna give me a lot of you know problems about. Hey, man, let's come out and party and whatnot, like your boys and whatnot. Um, taking ownership of the decisions that I made um, when I did make mistakes. You know, I just had to go back and talk to myself and let myself know, like, hey, this is something that's not gonna get you where you want to go. Um, and other things like you know, just you know, focusing on the academics was the number one thing uh, because my coach. Um, sat me down. This is a true story. Um, he sat me down and was like, "Hey, listen to me. If you don't get your stuff together, I'm going to ship you back to Camden, New Jersey." And you know, after he had that talk with me, I told him, "Do I want to stay in Louisiana, enjoy this weather, um, be around be, 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 be around the girls and whatnot and and whatnot?" I was like, "Okay, cool. I got to do this because it was really nothing home uh, for me. Um, being a foster child too, as well, going to Camden, New Jersey. Both of my parents not being around. They both passed away in 2003." Two down to five. Uh, that was an added motivation to me as well. Uh, so again, that was something that I knew that I had to do for myself, for and for, first and foremost. So um, I talk about that a lot to my younger generation because you know I, I believe some of them need to hear that from somebody that's done it and that's continuing to stay to stay active with it. So um, it, it, that that was one of the motivations, the sacrifices that coach sat me down, just like we, <laughs> just like we are today right now. And he sat me down in his office and he's like, hey. You need to get your stuff together, or I'm give you a first class ticket back home. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna wind up graduating with a two two seven. Didn't start off with a two seven, but it's <laughs> finished with a two seven. But it was it was kind of it was kind of it was it was um, an eye opener for me because nobody really sat down and put that in my ear. Mm -hmm. Because coming to high school, I was I was pretty good, and I thought I was you know the man. I went down to school, and he was like, hey, listen to me, man, you're replaceable. You don't do what you're supposed to do. I'll send you back. And I didn't know nothing about the recruiting game. Mm -hmm. I didn't know nothing about, okay, if you're not doing good, you know what I mean? They got next up. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, 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 yeah, yeah, so I didn't know that. So now that the stuff that I learned then, I tell the younger generation now, you got to be humble. Um, you got to have grit. You got to have you got to have discipline. That's the number one thing. If you're not disciplined when you know you're not supposed to be doing something or you know that's not going to help you get to your, your ultimate goal, you're not going to get far. It's going to put you behind the eight ball, and everybody else is going to get in front of you. So, uh, how can somebody take accountability like that, though? Like, if somebody's younger, how can they admit that they were wrong, and then reflect on that and get better? Like, what is some advice you could say? Is that something they do need to do self reflect on? Is that something they should have a mentor with? What would you? Like? Um, I would say, me personally, I would say both. Okay. Um, being strong. Within yourself, it, it's kind of hard because sometimes, you know, with social media being a big thing nowadays, you don't want to get bullied and doing certain things and people clown you and make fun of you and then that deals with your mental. Um, but at the same thing, you need to have that individual in your corner or individuals in your corner as far as pushing you, making sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do. Um, you keep it up to date with them, keeping up contact with them, um, calling them, letting them know, hey, cool, 
can we talk? Can can we meet up? Can we have this conversation? Um, don't have it all bottled in because it, it may not, you know, it, it come out the wrong way. Um, you may present it the wrong way or you may not execute um, on the track or on the field or on the court, wherever it is, because the, the mental the mental aspect about playing sports is really, really real. And if you don't have that, you know, you won't go far. Like, again, touch bases, Michael Johnson told me this. He told me this. He said, you've got to have track and field is 90% mental. The 10% important is you just showing up. Mm-hmm. But you got to execute your race. you got to execute everything that you did those three to four days practicing and then get your little treatment the day before you run, and then you got to go out and execute. You're not going to win every race. You're going to lose some, um, and I don't want you to be discouraged about it, but, you know, that's just something I tell them right now. So I had the number one runner in New Jersey. She didn't win states yesterday. Um, and I just told her she got to keep her head above water and just continue to just push herself because... But she's won previously. Yes, 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 yes. And I told her it's not all about winning. It's not all about, not all about winning. It's all about executing, um, being able to, to run fast. You have guys and girls that, that run 10, 10 flat and got 8th place, but that's their PR. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm okay with getting 8th place and I'm running 10 flat. I mean, and somebody beat me and ran a 9-8, I'm not going to be mad. Or somebody ran a 43-3... And I ran 45. Yeah, I'm cool with that. But right. like if, I, if I feel like I didn't give 100, percent then then me and the coach gonna go back and do some self reflecting, and then we're gonna go to the back to the drawing board and, and figure out what it is that we didn't do on whatever part of the 400 we didn't do well on. So, so you talked a lot about your grades and about making sure you were staying there. How did you balance everything? How did you balance schoolwork and then also making sure you were on practice on time, being able to work hard in practice? What would you say? got you through everything is it still that motivation um uh it was the great and and and, and the will to fail not to fail to be honest with you um my adopted mother who is still living today i told her you know my goal when she adopted me was to go to college for free because she has three sons and her son was my best friend and still is my best friend but we all brothers now I told her, like, you don't have to worry about me paying to go to college because I'm going to work extra hard to go to college so when I got to college like I had that interaction with my coach because again I wasn't focused, but then I, I, I re, regrouped and I put myself in a position where classes from eight to eight fifty, uh, nine to nine fifty, and then ten to ten fifty. So I had about a three hour gap from eleven o'clock till practice and weight room. So what I would do is I would go back to my apartment or dorm, take a little nap, study, get some study in, make it to practice about two forty five before three o'clock, get there, warm up, practice, because as freshman you're reported to, you, you're required to do. Um, study hall. So, again, no matter if you got a four, no, no matter if you got a four point or not, the coach said you got to go to study hall. You got to go to study hall. So it they was. Check them hours. Oh yeah, oh yes. yeah. If they don't check them out, they got somebody come up in that <laughs> library checking up on you. And you don't even know who they are. It's like an audit. So it's like, oh, who's this person? I don't recognize this Make person. Make sure you was in there. Yeah. So again, that was the thing about me. Um, you know, wanting to wanting to go far. I never thought about running track professionally. I never did. I just like had good friends that were competing at a high level, and I wind up, you know, moving on to to to, to Texas and and having a great experience with them. So, um, just to, just the will to just not want to settle for anything less than what you want for yourself. Because if you don't focus on what it is you want for yourself, you gotta want it more than everybody else don't want you to have it. And there's a lot of people in the background that don't want you to do certain things. That's, that's, that I'm telling you, they, they, oh, they, you cool, but as soon as you mess up, they want to they want to antagonize you. They don't want to uplift you. They don't want to tell you, hey, this is what you need to do. Or if you need help, reach out. A lot of people don't off, offer that that help a hand. And that's what that's what kind of you know I, I try to just instill in the young people today. Like, don't be afraid to text me or call me, mm-hmm. no matter what time it is. If you're bothered with something, just reach out to me. If I don't get back to you, then I get back to you when I see my phone and give you the best advice possible. So. Okay. And how did you, so I know you said you played different sports growing up. Yes, ma'am. How did you know that track and field was like, okay, this is what I'm going to stick to? Uh, actually, I didn't know. I was, <laughs> I was a, I played basketball and I boxed uh, when I was younger because I was a little, you know, tearing child growing up. Um, so running track just, it, like I said, it, it came. I did, I did club track just to keep me out of trouble. Um, but again, boxing was there. Basketball was there. I, I gave up boxing and basketball my freshman year in high school and uh like again another true story my barber till this day he's he lives in uh milwaukee and he told me hey man you need to run track and i stayed with track and field my freshman year the first time i ever run 400 was a minute and 10 seconds 
which was terrible. <laughs> like if you if you put that in the in the numbers game in the freshman year, but you know he 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 made me stick with it, and like I said, um, he he had faith in me, and I and I wound up just sticking with it because I I was discouraged about being small basketball player, football player, and whatnot. I was like, I'm not going to get a college scholarship for, for football. I'm a 115-pound senior, man. I'm like, you know, so, you know, that, that was my boxing weight. But at the end of the day, it's like I stayed with the track and field aspect because, again, it was fun. It wasn't too hard at practice. And it was, you know, I got to meet new people. So, but that, that's, I, I, I want to say freshman year. So that's when I knew that track and field was going to gonna, gonna be my sport. So, Did you pick up weights? Did you start doing uh, weightlifting in high school? Uh, I used to run from the weight room, to be honest with you. I used to do push-ups, <laughs> crunches, sit-ups, but, like, weights and squats, like, I didn't like lifting weights. To this day, I still don't like it. Like, people ask me, I hate leg day. I run from leg day. If somebody, you know, let's go work on legs. Nah, I'm cool. I do upper body all day, pull-ups, <laughs> crunches, dips, curls, all that, but I won't do no legs. If I do legs, it's, like, because I'm really, really bored. I said, let me just do this right now. So, but... Do I, I don't tell my kids that now. I was gonna say, nah, 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 don't nah, tell nah, you. Don't, kids. don't, don't, don't be like, don't be like me in certain <laughs> areas because I know my body, and I'm at an age right now where I can get away with it. But uh -huh. y'all, nah, y'all, there's, there's a lot of things that you have to do now to, to, to succeed at the next level and um to, to be powerful coming out the blocks and even even just running or jumping. And so sport. would you would you say to athletes, you know, especially track and field, should they get in a weight room like senior year, junior year? Nah, they should stay. They, they, you know, nowadays like everybody got a personal trainer and everybody has someone trying to get their child ahead of the next person because mm -hmm. it's a lot of money out there with these kids with these NIL deals now. So, you know, I would recommend at a young age, you know, working a kid with some band work at 10 years old, um, having to do plyometrics, push-ups, you know, squat jumps, stuff like that. Because you, what they used to say is don't have the kids lift weights because they're going to stunt their growth. Um, it's a, it, I really don't pay it no mind. But at the same time, like, to my knowledge, I've never seen anybody use weights or lift weights and they didn't grow anymore. Right. So they just, you know, you hear something that people believe and then they run with it. You got to do what's best for you because what works for you may not work for everybody else, and I tell people that all the time. So, you think people should start with that, especially if they can't afford like a personal trainer, like how what somebody... plyometrics? Yeah, yeah. like yeah. band work, things of that nature. The thing that you asked me earlier this evening um, is the discipline. You got to want to do it. Mm -hmm. Like you shouldn't be. I shouldn't have to call you and tell you to do your workout. Right. You have the internet. It's it's free workouts on the internet. A lot of a lot. YouTube of, and everything. Yes, a lot of people are not hungry, but then if you lose. Or somebody kick your tail, or whatever. Then you come back crying. Oh well, well, how many times have you worked out? Like, when the last time you did something on your own without somebody telling you to do it? Mm -hmm. Y'all have the answers right in your hand, and you don't, act, you don't, you don't access. You know what I mean? The ability to it. So it's it's kind of it's kind of different, different. But I mean, at the same time, you know, this generation, I, I don't want to see them fail. But some of them, you know, it's just they they're lazy. And I'll be honest with you, they're lazy. I'm not afraid to say it. They're lazy. They want, 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 but they don't want to put the extra work in that it takes to become Absolutely. the results that they, they want. They want to it, like hand it to them. Yes, Especially yes. Especially like people with talent. Yes. They, they think the talent's going to take them that far and they don't yeah, have to work. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, you're right about that. And it bothers me. So when I, when, I, when I give the reaction that I do give, they don't understand. It's passionate because I've done it at a high level. Mm -hmm. Listening to me, not saying I'm the greatest coach in the world, but I'm, I'm damn good to be who I am. And I produced a lot of athletes mentally and on the track. Uh, but, again, they don't – they get too comfortable. You get one win. You do fast. You get comfortable. You know, so a lot of kids need to be honest with themselves. And they don't – they're not honest. They want to do, do, do. And, and some of them want to grow up fast. And I tell them, it's no rush to become a grown-up. <laughs> it's, it's, look, it's not. <laughs> not no, I'm telling you, man. You <laughs> become a grown-up, You become a grown-up, you want the responsibilities mm -hmm. coming kicking your butt. I'm telling you. <laughs> You better live up the amount of all you can. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm telling you. I, I, I tell anybody. I told a, a coworker the other day, honest and truth. I said, if I could go to college right now and not pay for college, I would go back. I would quit my job. Just do four years. I go four years again because I never experienced the, the college life like everybody thought that I did when I really didn't. I didn't party. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to no clubs. But right now, what I know now, why not go out there and have fun? <laughs> because again, it's, it. I didn't. I was. I was too focused on running track. 
I was too focused on running track, too focused. But college is the best years of your life to me, man. Until you, exactly. you, you yeah. yeah. It, now, if you get, you know, don't quote unquote the, the older generation, they say if you get married and find that person, then that's the best year of your life. But college, oh man, because the relationships that you build with them are still everlasting right now. Mm -hmm. My friends right now, my roommates, I still talk to them in group chat all the time. People that I had from high school, I don't really talk to them at all. I don't at all because they was quote unquote the big shots, and you know now they're not doing what they quote unquote was supposed to do with people had high expectations of them. Right. A little quiet guy like myself, they ain't nobody <laughs> maybe no mind, but I mean it is what it is. So, um track track and field was great. What would you say is a pathway for somebody who is like who's too comfortable right now? So if you have the athlete who's won a race and they have that high ego, what can you say like how their pathways wanna look if they stay in that comfortable zone compared to somebody who gets uncomfortable, wants to work, like what are the two different pathways? Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. It, it's their choice. It's, it's the choice that they choose. Um, like me and you are two different individuals. I have no control of what you do or how you go about becoming a great athlete, mm -hmm. a great runner, how you practice, and you have no control about about how I go about certain things. Um, it's it, it's all it's, it's all about the will. If you want it, you gonna go out there and, and make the the sacrifices day in and day out, and, and that's what it takes. But you don't have to show everybody, and that's the thing about it. Don't let everybody know what you're doing because once you give everybody... everybody post everything. Everybody, everybody post all the workouts. And yeah, you give everybody things. access to you. Uh -huh. At the end of the day, keep your workouts to yourself. And when you go out there, <laughs> you put them times down. So, it, it, you know, it's every now and then I post certain workouts. I post what I, post when I want to post. Um, I don't post everything because, again, my storage would be <laughs> over my phone. But, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, your path is different. But I don't have... Any, any any clear cut, you know, the answer for that. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to do what you need to do, and your coaches and your team is going to do what you need to do, and put you in the best position to be successful. Now, again, if you don't execute the race plan and what y'all supposed to be doing, then y'all going to come back and y'all going to talk about it. Y'all not going to run somebody else's race. I'm not going to run a 400 like somebody else. Right. I'm going to run a 400 the way I know how to run it and the like way I was coach. taught. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And whether I execute or not, we're going to get talked about and. You know, it's, 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 it's things like, okay, cool, you may have a faster 200 than me, so you may get to the 200 mark faster than I do because of the 400 time. So I may run a 21.3. A you may run a 20 point or 19. Your 200 going to get there faster is not going to hurt you as much as it hurt me. Right. Because I got to get there like 22 second 23. That guy try to backdoor 25 or 24 or whatever it may take. But, you know, they could go at 20 point and, and then backdoor another 22 and that give you 43 seconds. Because they got quicker foot speed than me, and they're stronger than me. So there's things that you know you got to look into that, and you know, you know, you know, execute. But you just got to run your race and, and do it the best that you can. So. Okay. Being a track athlete, have you ever been injured before? Ah, uh, no, not not, uh -huh. never, never, never. That's never. a blessing. Yeah, never that been injured. It's funny, I got injured after, <laughs> after <laughs> a, after track and field. You know, when I when I retired. Um, <laughs> I, I, what did I do? I was playing flag football. Oh, goodness. I'm trying to be a young boy. I went up for a catch. Somebody stepped on my foot and fractured my foot. And mm. I, was in, I was in a boot for like eight weeks. Literally. Stepped on my foot with this cleat. And I had a, a cracked, fractured foot, right foot. Yep. That was the only injury I ever had. Did you play football after that? Uh, yeah, I did. did. But again, I was a little bit more cautious. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't as aggressive, okay. you know, when the, when the ball's in the air. I'm not going up there trying to, you know, get a contract because some of those guys play flag football and sports. They, they think that scouts are out there trying to get them a contract. <laughs> so, you know, at my age, I, I stayed in my lane and I go back okay. to the, the coaching aspect. I shoot the basketball, may throw the football every now and then, but I'm not going to go out there because it's, it's too competitive and I know I'm too competitive and I won't want to put myself in a, that situation again. So Okay, so you've never been injured, so not, like – being a formal collegiate athlete myself, you know, I've been injured. How have you kept yourself from not being injured? Is it treatment, pre-treatment? Is it heating, ice baths? Um, I want to I, I say all, all of those combined, okay. to, to be honest with you, and, 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 and knowing your body. When I say knowing your body, you know the limit that you could put your body through without put, yeah. You seem like you're an individual that pushed yourself a little. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And so I couldn't push anything. Yeah, more. and sometimes you got to trust your body and you got to yeah. trust what the coach is saying. So um, if you know that you want to compete and you know that it's not the best thing for you, but you're telling your coach you want to run, like, you know, that's your body and you got to do what you got to do. Like, I tell my, my athletes now, we're not going to do that. 
until you, you know, you give me a note from your doctor, or your therapist saying that you cleared to run, right. get off my track. Or you yeah. can stay with me right in my head and you're gonna help me coach the other athletes. So I've had that before. And it was like I said, last year the young lady that the number one runner in the state of New Jersey, she was about about three three and a half, four weeks, and she just hung with me the whole time at practice, being that extra coach. You know, the, 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 the younger athletes watched her come to practice, jog, give some tips, um, and it, it was kind of inspiring to them because, again, they, she really doesn't speak that much, so when she spoke, it was like, okay, cool, this is what you need to work it's on. It's meaningful. This. Yeah, yeah, very, very meaningful. She also probably seen the seen track from a different view. Yeah. Like a I, different set, like yeah. a new set of eyes, too. Yeah, I believe. Just not being the, the, the athlete. athlete. Yep, 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 yep. She's seen it because, again, it's the, the coaching aspect because mm -hmm. I want to say that's going to be, that's that that's very, very, you know, I want to say inspiring when the younger generation or people on your team see that you could give tips and give coach, give coaching, you know, uh, feedback on it instead of just, just running, 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 running. So. She's probably wondering, too, like, is that something that I'm doing? Yeah, like or he's maybe like, you want to do yeah. it later in life. Yeah, yeah. You, you never know. I never thought about getting into coaching. I never thought about, you know, like I said, a lot of things. But, you know, I believe one thing that someone's told me just recently, we are where we're supposed to be right now because that's what his plan is upstairs. So, again, again like where you at right now, this, this is this is our fate right now. We're supposed to be sitting on this couch talking, <laughs> interviewing me and whatnot. Um, and then how our day goes about it, that's just what it's about. So what we do tomorrow is – is his plan again so you know it's, it's about the choices that we make and the, you know sacrifices i tell the individuals you got decisions you got choices and you got consequences so your choice is going to determine your decision your decision will determine, determine your consequences so you know your consequences may be you know good it may be not so good but right. you you are going to determine how far you go in life and what you do with yourself so okay speaking of where we're supposed to be right now if you were to well first of all let me ask you this if you would go back would you do it all over again uh, do what the whole process all over again? yes even from i would say from high school oh yeah yeah do all over I, would, again? I would do it would all you do something different <sighs> knowing what you know today yeah the knowledge yeah. you have today yeah yeah yes ma'am i would do i would do i would do a few things differently um I would give me like two things i would do a few things differently um i would lift more weights uh, because that I, I, that hurt me in high school because I wasn't strong. When I looked at the the, the competition, they were bigger, mm -hmm. stronger, cut. Um, I just ran off a of will. And, we didn't lift weights in high school. Either. Yeah, wow. We had, see, we had, we see. had nothing. Yeah. Um, I probably didn't start lifting until the end of senior year. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the coach did. So mm -hmm. I would I would lift weights and um, I would be more uh, hands on when it comes to certain things as far as you know. The academics in the classroom in high school. Okay. I wasn't too. I wasn't too fond of going to class. Uh, you know, did my my well, playing hooky days cutting. Uh, but and I tell my kids now again, I managed to make it back to practice on time. <laughs> I never got caught. Nowadays, y'all do it. Y'all do. Y'all don't know how to do certain things. So I said, y'all doing things, and I know when y'all doing things. Well, how do you know this? Y'all sloppy with it. So, but to be honest with you, that's what I would do. Uh, be more focused in my classroom the academics and lift weights a little bit more. Okay. Um, I was a I was a, I was a great teammate. I was a great friend. I'm um, still am. Uh, at the same time, you know, I just want to just you know just continue to just push, 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 and you know you got to be okay with being uncomfortable. That's what I tell the athletes now. Uncomfortable is going to push you to be great. And, I think that's just life. Yeah, but they don't they don't understand <laughs> that. It, it, yeah, they don't understand that. So uh, I just want them to understand, like you know, when I come at you, I'm coming at you from a from a, from a, a loving spot. It may not, the delivery may not be there, but at the same time, I'm never going to put you in a position to hurt yourself, or I'm going to put you in a position to let somebody hurt you. So, again, when you don't do good, mm -hmm. I get the backlash, not you. They're going to come to me, or you're his dad, you're his coach, or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, again, I just want to make sure that I do the best that I can to continue to just, you know, um, plant that seed in, the, in anyone's life, whether you're a young adult, whether you're a teenager, whether you're a little kid. So, uh, I'm I'm not going anywhere, and I tell my athletes and the ones that that come in my life in the future, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to change my approach and my style about it. So, um, what about in a collegiate athlete? What would you do differently? Oh, uh, that life, um, college life was like I said, uh, that college, <laughs> college life was was fun. Um, like uh, it's 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 things that you know you could talk about off the air, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the college life was fun. Like I said, the, my experience down there, going from New Jersey to Louisiana, was like 
Beautiful weather. Oh, you, when I say beautiful weather, I never knew nothing about Mardi Gras, New Orleans, none of that. It was it was lovely. Like they treated me like. And what like, university was you at? I was at Southern University. I graduated. Okay. I wound up graduating from Southern University okay. in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's about 10, 15 minutes from LSU. So it's kind of like mm-hmm. hand hand. Once I graduated there, I wound up making it back there years later to get my master's. So, um, it, it it was fun. The weather was the people out there. The food it was. The experience like I, that's that southern that's that yeah. good southern food yeah yeah I, I, yeah yeah it does i had visions i had visions yeah. about going back down there like i said the, the the people out there is like i said it's bar none they, the hospitality is great um like the food the food is good they just they just love you and like you know I, I wish more people was kind to to certain individuals not because of what you have or what you don't have but just because <sighs> that's hard you're asking. You're asking for I, I, something. I, 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 that's that probably won't ever, you know. But you know, I, I treat everybody the same way. I may treat people, you know, differently. Once I realize that you have crossed that 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 line of, you know, trying the boundary. To, yeah, yeah. Or, or trying to take advantage of the kindness, and mm-hmm. you know, I'll play. I'll play like I don't know, but I'm. I know, and I just I'll just step off. So my biggest thing is, is just continue to just you know protect yourself because nobody's gonna love you the way that you love yourself and we we got to start to choose ourselves too because i'm a giver i'm always trying to aim to please and put people in position or making sure people are fine and never put myself first and i'm, I'm in that position right now where i'm i'm, I'm starting to choose myself um and, and it feels good actually so again it helps with my mental um when i'm not feeling good even my kids they recognize it coach joe how's your day today you don't seem like you'll be self today yeah well I can't tell them because it's right. not their business, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just had a rough day at work or something. I just say that. Just keep it up. Well, I hope your day gets better. You know, even stuff like that. Oh, my kids nice. say that. Yeah. You know, yeah my kids nice. come up to me speaking to me all the time in school. I, they see me at my chair. Come here. Hey, coach you up. Good morning. Have a good day. You know, so I wish adults would do that, <laughs> you know. But, Again, we're asking for <laughs> I, I know. We're asking for you know, so. Um, just a few more things here. So you were talking about mindset. Yes, ma'am. Being a graduate, if you graduate high school, what type of mindset should you have going into college, being a collegiate athlete for track and field? Is it something like over the summer, um, if the coaches from the school I'm going to do not give me workouts, should I already have the mindset of preparing, doing summer workouts, getting with a personal trainer? What kind of shit, like, and then going into, you could, you know, they're not ready. They don't know about the collegiate workout yet, you know, going in in August or maybe July, just depending on some schools. But the workout that they really want to get. To be honest with you, I, I've had I've had a number of athletes. The workouts that I learned at Baylor, when they train with me before they go to college, I I train them the same way. So I've had athletes come to me and say they were prepared. Oh, they say thanks for the workouts. Like okay. literally, it's it's Good. I literally I had an athlete South Carolina, Penn State, Texas Tech, uh, Clemson. They like the workouts you gave me. The workouts that we did in college was nothing. And I was like, I'm just giving you the only thing I'm doing is back during the recovery, giving you more recovery because I know your body's not ready for that that, that recovery. So yeah. it, it's all about rest. It's all about recovery. It's all about doing drills. When you're doing your reps, don't just sit around and bend over and, and gas for air. You got to stay moving because once your lactic last, last acid starts to tighten up, you won't be able to perform at a high level. Um, so what I do is I I, I would I would I, I try to push them and and just. You know, reach out to me. Like I give them, I give them tips on certain things. But again, like we stated earlier in the, in the interview, um, you got to want it. You got to go out like there and do it yourself. Yeah, you got to do it. Yeah. Cause, like if I gave you a workout, if I gave you a workout and you didn't do it, I, you could tell me you did it. But I'm gonna be able to tell that following weekend. Mm-hmm. Like say, like if I gave you two hundreds. 550s, 300s, and you said, yeah, I did the workout. Yeah, they were cool. I ran these times, and you try to outsmart me because I have kids that do that, and then you come back the following week. I'm like, okay, you did that one-week workout. Now you should be at this time this week, but you ain't hit none of the time. What you do? Be honest with yourself. Right. I went on a vacation. I went party. I went this and that. So you being not truthful with me, that that, that's my line of you're, you're not being honest, and you're, the disrespect that you have towards me is like is not there. You need to listen to somebody that's been where you're trying to go, Absolutely. and that's the number one thing. I'm not. I, I don't get no gratification out of this. But the only thing I do love, I want to see you succeed. Whether you don't make it to the next level, you got a degree out of this. Mm-hmm. So my thing is like, don't lie to yourself, and then you lie to me, and then if I step off, then it's, you know you can't you can't blame me because you wasn't honest with me. So therefore, I still should treat you the same way because you lied to me to my face, and I'm I'm putting in effort 
in effort and effort to try to make sure that you're doing the necessary thing, nah, we're not going to do that. So I keep it real with the, with the individuals that come across me. So they're like, yo, why you didn't call me? Why you didn't call me for the workout? No, I don't need you. You need me. Yeah. So hit me up. I'm, I'm going to reply to you all the time. So. Do you believe in a quote where it says, pay now, I'll play later? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to do that. But they, you say that now, they, as long as I'm like, huh, what's that? It goes right over their head. Right. right. It's certain lingo that you can't use in this generation. So, again, they ain't going to know it. Yeah, you know, you can tell you probably. They're going to be they gonna be butt hurt when they get to the college. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. it's an eye opener. It's an eye opener. And then when you get replaced, then. I was going to say, like you said earlier. Yeah, I'm going to tell I'll, the kid. Like, You're going to get replaced. You have 100% scholarship. Don't do what you're supposed to do. I'm taking 20 and giving it to a walk on. What you want to do with that other 20%? Oh, mom, I got to take out a loan. Mom, like, nah, you better come home. I'm not taking out a loan. So now you was playing around, and the coach took 20% of your scholarship because you wasn't executing at conference championships because he expected you to make the conference championship. That's what happened to a kid on my team. He didn't get no points at conference championships. He didn't do well in the classroom. Coach was like, hey, I'm taking 40% of your scholarship. Mm-hmm. You can stay here or you could. Could... What you going to do? You made that choice. And like I stated earlier, Choices, decisions, consequences. <laughs> well, now in college, you know, they're getting paid. they getting paid. Yeah, college. but again. We can't, we, shoot, we ain't getting nothing. <laughs> and that's just why I go back to telling you, if I go they, to college again now, <laughs> I, I, would, I would resign from my job, <laughs> go to college, get massive NIL deals, easy. Because my work ethic is going to outwork a, a 22-year-old kid right now. Mm-hmm. I tell them, like, what? Y'all don't want to capitalize on that? Y'all think about partying? And stuff? Man, I'm getting this money, and I'm going to save it. They don't know that the party's still going to be there later. Oh, the party's going to be there. They're going to be better. Yeah, as you get older. <laughs> like, what? Absolutely. You party with the sea? You yeah. might be able to own a club. Yeah. But, oh, God. Yeah, so, hopefully, I mean, hopefully this helps them. You know, hopefully I, I hope, I they, hope come, so too. they come back to this and say, okay, let me see what Coach Joe was saying. I, I hope so, too. But, uh, you know. Oh, man. Like, like I said, we could talk about a lot of stuff because you being an athlete yourself, we have a clear understanding of certain Absolutely. things. So. Well, listen, thank you. I appreciate you. But one last thing. So if you've been on here, this is for our youth. This is for um, high school athletes, collegiate athletes, anybody wanting to go pro, but also knowing that they should have an education in the background. Two people, two people who you think that would be great to sit on for Motivation of the Millers that you believe have a story or actually can help the generation. Oh, two, two people? people? Two people. Oh, man. Who would you, who would you <sighs> because these are the two people I'm going to reach out to. So who to, with two people do you think? And they don't have to be track and field. Any sport, you know, they can be retired. They can still be um, in the field, you know, still competing. But can you do it from? Because they, the two people that I recommend highly, they don't live in this area, so they. Live. It's okay. Uh, we can get them virtually. Okay, cool. So cool. two people. Who would you say? Oh man, that's. I'm. I'm. Because I'm. I'm, 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 I'm make sure. I'm gonna say this. To, to you, uh, <laughs> Sonya Richards-Ross, I will recommend her highly. Okay. Um, she is... I know a lot of... I, I want to say she's doing phenomenal things. And when I say phenomenal things, she's a, a, an ambassador. She's a great mother, great friend, Absolutely. great daughter. Um, she does a lot, of, a lot, a lot of phenomenal things. Um, she's in charge of this, this I want to say, um, brand called Mommy Nation. So if you go look it up, um, you will see what I'm talking about. That's one. And then the next person I would recommend is a good friend of mine. He lives in Georgia right now, uh, Daryl Williamson. He was one of my training partners at Baylor University when we ran at Nike. Uh, he was an Olympic gold medalist. Um, I would recommend him highly uh, because me and him had similar talks and similar stories. Uh, we came from the foster system. and. Um, we, we gravitated towards one another. We had that utmost respect when we was at practice daily. So, Sion Richard Ross and Daryl Williamson, um, look forward to you guys uh, being on here soon. And um, I want to say thank you again for the opportunity. I had a great time here with Selena. Um, and I look forward to, you know, doing future endeavors with her. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you, too.